Hi, it's Michael Sinoff with Michael Sinoff's HardToFindSeminars.com. The title of this interview is called The Cancer Conspiracy, What Your Doctors Don't Want You to Know. A cancer diagnosis can instill fear in the heart of even the bravest person. There's so many different types of cancer and so many known and potential causes of the disease. What then should you do if you receive a cancer diagnosis? Shouldn't you follow your oncologist's instruction? Suzanne Summers, health writer and author of the book Knockout, says maybe not. Even though this is probably the scariest time in your life and you may feel like you do not have a moment to spare, it's important for you to realize you do have a choice about how to treat your cancer. Suzanne Summers fought cancer over 10 years ago and walked away victorious. She moved on and left it all behind her until a bizarre incident brought cancer back to the forefront of her mind. And in this interview, Suzanne Summers will reveal the shocking things she learned about cancer treatment. Here's what you'll learn in this interview. You'll learn how a medical nightmare led Suzanne Summers to discover the shocking truth about cancer treatments. You'll learn new information about cancer treatments that your doctors don't want you to know. You'll learn successful cancer cures that most people don't know about. You'll learn chemotherapy myths that are exposed. You'll learn about amazing new advances in cancer treatment, and you'll learn about the empowering news from cancer patients. According to Suzanne Summers, you do have a choice. Regardless of which treatment you decide to take, you can choose to educate yourself about your options before making a decision. When you listen to this interview, you'll learn from Suzanne Summers how you can make an informed decision regarding your cancer treatment, but you'll also learn why Suzanne Summers is no longer afraid of being diagnosed with cancer again. This interview is under 30 minutes, and I hope it can help you or someone you know. Now let's get going. Hi, this is Chris Costello, and I've teamed up with Michael Senoff to bring you the world's best wellness-related interviews. So if you know anyone struggling with their weight, with cancer, diabetes, ADHD, autism, heart disease, or other health challenges, please send them to Michael Senoff's HardToFindSeminars.com. Our guest today is Suzanne Summers. Suzanne, thank you so much for being with us today. My pleasure. So, Suzanne, back in November of 08, you had just an incredibly traumatic experience, and it sounds like this book, Knockout, was partly the result of that. What happened in November? Well, you're right. This book is an outcropping of this experience. I never would have written a book on cancer, even though I had cancer almost 10 years ago. I always felt that I was done with that. I had it. I got rid of it, and I moved on. But what's interesting is that because I'm a health writer, I had my natural killer cells tested, which is how to test for the strength of your immune system. About a month before this experience, my doctor said, wow, you're at 43. And I said, well, I have no frame of reference. He said, well, usually people your age have immune systems that are somewhere around two or three. So I was at 43. That's an uber immune system. So what happened to me that my immune system was knocked out in a matter of five minutes? I still do not know to this day. But all of a sudden, I was at a bar restaurant with my group. We had just come off the air, and I had a glass of Merlot and a salad, and other people in my group had a glass of Merlot and salad, one glass. My glass was kind of behind me on a little cocktail table. I ate my salad on my lap, finished my salad took a few more sips of the glass of Merlot and walked out of the restaurant. The moment I walked out of the restaurant, the room started spinning. I mean, spinning, and I became freezing cold. I went upstairs to my hotel room. I was so cold, I actually asked my husband if he would lie on top of me. And then I started breaking out in welts all over my body, in my ears, in my nose, on my scalp, neck, bottom of my feet, under my arm, everywhere. And my hands started swelling up, and then I started having a difficult time breathing. We flew home that night. I was freezing in the plane, couldn't get warm, couldn't breathe, got home, thought about going to the hospital. We always minimized, and I thought, no, I need to get in my own bed. I've obviously got the flu or something. I had a fitful couple of hours. I called one of the doctors in my previous book, Breakthrough, and I got halfway through, and he said, stop, you're in danger. Get to the emergency room. Got to the emergency room. was pretty much out of breath. Felt like I was being strangled. That was the only way I could describe it. That was an anaphylactic shock. It's like there were hands around my neck, and I just couldn't get air. Emergency rooms are incredible, and they really saved my life. They banged me with Decadron. They put Albutrin and Oxygen on me and Benadryl to get the swelling down. You know, I started coming back to life, but I was still having trouble breathing, and they said, we have to do a CAT scan. And I thought, gosh, I've had a pharmaceutical drug in nine years, and the radiation scares me. I just don't like it, but something is seriously wrong, so I had the CAT scan. 
After the CAT scan, the doctor comes into the ER room, and I'm still on oxygen, and he has a nurse with him, and they close the door. And I brought her with me because I hate what I have to say. You have a large mass on your lungs. It looks like the cancer is metastasized into your liver. We don't know what's wrong with your liver. It's so enlarged. It's covering your entire abdomen. You have so many tumors in your chest, we can't count them. They all have masses in them. And you have a blood spot, and you have pneumonia. So we're going to check you into the hospital because the blood spot will kill you first. That began a nightmare, a nightmare that's not quite over yet. That must have just been incredible. And I know one of the things that you say in Knockout, one of the quotes, and it was very moving to read, was, I know now what it feels like to be dying. There was a beauty to this experience that changed me forever. And that really comes through in your book and what you've tried to do to help people find out what they can do to recover from cancer and and to treat these terrifying conditions. While I was in the hospital, I was diagnosed by six different doctors with full-body cancer. And I was offered full-body chemotherapy as the antidote. And I looked at the oncologist and I said, just so you know where I'm coming from, I'd rather die. I'm going to find another way. Or if I'm going to die, I want to die with quality of life, with what I have left. Because I knew if you had lung cancer that had metastasized throughout your body, that you'd have very little time. So while I was in that valley of fear and seeing my death, I said to my husband one day, you know, I've been keeping a file on these doctors who are curing cancer. If I can get out of here, I want to go to Houston to Dr. Brzezinski. I want to go to New York to go to Dr. Gonzalez or to Nevada to Dr. Forsyth. One of these doctors, I've been gathering information on them. So that is what gave me my hope. While all the doctors were telling me to get my things in order, that there was nothing they could do for me unless I wanted to take full body chemotherapy, that there was no other treatment. I held on to the one little hope that maybe one of these doctors could help me. So after surgery, they cut open my neck and removed a piece of my lung and a piece of one of those so-called tumors and discovered I didn't have cancer at all. It was a fungus that is prevalent in the desert southwest called coccidiomycosis, and it's more popular and it's called valley fever, and it's in the top two layers of soil. So when the wind blows in our area, we're breathing it in, and most of us have this fungus in us lying dormant unless something jars your immune system. That's the missing piece of the puzzle. But it reads like cancer on a CAT scan, and I thought to myself, how many people are undergoing full-body chemotherapy for what is really valley fever, where they don't need that chemotherapy at all? So I started interviewing these doctors that I'd kept a file on. Dr. Brzezinski out of Houston, Dr. Gonzalez out of New York, Dr. Forsyth out of Nevada. I interviewed an Italian doctor. I interviewed Dr. Russell Blaylock, Dr. Wright, Dr. Gallister, Burton Goldberg, Ralph Moss, all these incredible scientists. What I found was if someone chooses chemotherapy, I interviewed the scientific advisory board of Life Extension along with Bill Balloon, who's the editor of the magazine. And I said, if you're going to take standard care chemotherapy, what can you do so that it's not so hard, so it's more effective? And they talk about that in a the chapter. There's things you can buy over the counter like modified citrus pectin or some betadine because when they found when they cut into tumors to remove them in surgery, that they actually create metastasis in many cases because that capsule around it is broken. And those rogue cells, you know, disseminate throughout the body. If you take modified citrus pectin and cimetidine, it lines the artery walls and the turbulence from the blood, pushes these rogue cells out of your body, and they can't lodge in the artery walls and create metastasis in other parts of the body. And there are other great things you can do if you are taking standard of care. If you want to go integrative, which is use standard of care, chemotherapy, plus alternatives, then I would go to Dr. Forsyth in Nevada. He takes your blood when you come in. He sends it off to Germany for a chemosensitivity test. Hi, it's Michael Sinoff with HardToFindSeminars.com. Thanks for watching this video. You know, many of my interviews last 30 minutes, 40 minutes, an hour, sometimes even up to two and a half hours long. They're actual mini seminars, and you've just listened to a short sample of just one of over 117 hours of exciting, hard-hitting, mind-blowing interviews on how to make money in direct mail, advertising, copywriting. I assure you, there is not a resource any Anywhere on the internet or on the planet that comes close to the free information I provide at hardtofindseminars.com. So go right now to hardtofindseminars.com and you'll have free access to 117 hours of audio interviews with typed word for word downloadable transcripts and downloadable MP3 files. Please browse some more of the videos or go right directly to hardtofindseminars.com. Thanks for watching.